So during this latest stock market crash, a lot of people out there, including myself, were talking about how the VIX index was relatively calm considering the magnitude of the move that we saw in the S&P 500. You know, down 20% in a relatively short period of time, typically we would have seen the VIX index much higher than it actually got. Now, I talk about the VIX index a lot, and it's probably one of the most quoted volatility metrics out there. But recently it also occurred to me that many people may not actually know what it is, but they may also not want to really ask about it because, you know, maybe out of embarrassment. It's like back in school, maybe you're in physics class and the professor's up talking about, you know, planetary rotation and orbits and gravitational pulls, Newton's laws. Nobody wants to put up their hand and say, you know, okay, great, I understand all of that, but what's a planet? You know, nobody wants to go back to the very beginning and ask those basic questions out of embarrassment or whatever. But the thing that we learn is the chances are pretty good. If you have a question, then other people are wondering the same thing. So today I thought I would do everybody a solid, not make you ask for that. I do talk about it pretty much every day. And at this point, people probably don't want to say, well, you know, by the way, I don't really know what this is. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk about it. And I want to cover a couple of basic points. The first is what is the VIX index? I'm going to actually explain explain what it is. And then secondly, what do those VIX values actually mean? So first of all, we're going to start with a basic definition. So the VIX index, more properly known as the SIBO Volatility Index. SIBO stands for Chicago Board Options Exchange. And a basic definition is as follows. Calculated based on a strip of S&P 500 options, the VIX index measures within one standard deviation the forward one-year expected movement of the S&P 500. So that's really all it is. For all of the mention in financial blogs and the financial media out there, it's really just a representation of forward expected returns on the S&P 500 based on market activity in the options market. Now one thing you may have heard several times about the VIX, oftentimes it is called the fear index. And the basic reasoning for that is most of the option activity on the S&P 500, at least the hedging activity, is on the put side, on the downside, people protecting portfolios against a significant drop in market value. So typically we see more action on the hedging put side rather than the speculation call side. And this is one of the points that I really want to hammer home because fear index gives people the wrong impression. It leads people to believe that it is actually an inverse relationship here where if the S&P 500 is crashing, the VIX spikes up, and if the S&P 500 is calm, that must mean the VIX is very low. When in actual fact, you can look at this definition and there's no upward or downward bias anywhere in this. The VIX index is completely directionless. It is only measuring forward expected movement, plus or minus, and that is very important. Now it is true that the correlation between the VIX index and the S&P 500 is negative. So what we're looking at here is the rolling correlation between VIX and SPX. SPX is the S&P 500 index. And this goes all the way back to 1990. So the long-term rolling correlation is about minus 70%. Remember, correlation doesn't imply magnitude. It simply means that if one of them is going up, if there's a negative correlation like we see here, it typically means the other one is going down. And that happens about 70% of the time. But it is valuable to know that that's not necessarily the case. There are many periods, especially on a shorter time frame, where both of them move in tandem. The VIX and the S&P 500 can both go up or they can both go down at the same time. If we break this down into just a five day chart, it's a little bit messy to look at, but you can see that here that the correlations are here on the left. And while the long term average may be about minus 70 on this bottom line, you can see that there are several periods on a five day window where correlations are nearing 100% positive. So that would mean that every day the S&P was going up, the VIX was also going up, or vice versa, both of them going down every day for a five-day period. And that happens quite often over history. One of the more pronounced examples of this that I like to show people is back in the late 90s when the S&P 500 was raging higher. This is the dot-com boom where pretty much everything was going straight up. You can see the performance here, 1997 up 33%, 98 it was up 28, 1999 it was up 21%. Very consistent, very strong performance. So if the VIX index is the fear index and we are looking at a period where the S&P 500 is very smooth and performing very well, then most people will be under the impression that the VIX must have been very low during this period. 
Maybe something similar to like we saw in 2016 and 2017. Very good stock performance, very low drawdowns, and a VIX extremely low, historically low. But actually what we see, I've got a chart here showing all of the VIX index mean values. This is the average for the whole year. And you can see I've highlighted 97 to 99. The VIX index was actually averaging values around 24 during that period. So much for the fear index, right? Those are some of the highest values we saw on an average level. And yet the S&P 500 was performing extremely well. In fact, the annual returns for these three years were substantially better than the previous three years that we've seen recently from 2016 to 2018, yet the VIX recently is far lower than it was back then. 2018 was a negative year for stocks and still the VIX index had a mean of 16.64. That's below the historical average and way below these values that we saw at the tail end of the dot-com run-up. So it's really important to understand that stable markets doesn't necessarily mean a low VIX. And the reason is because let's say you were trading volatility products, right? You were trying to trade VXX or UVXY, and you're using your typical S&P 500 technical analysis. You're looking at moving averages, everything looks fine, very low drawdowns, it's very consistent. Maybe you've got your MACD and your Bollinger Bands, whatever it is people are accustomed to using. But that might actually work in some environments, like in 2017, for example, it would have worked very well but it's not necessarily gonna work in all environments. And like I showed from 97 to 99, it perhaps may not have. And this actually applies to all areas of the market as well. It's very important to understand what the metrics actually mean because in stable markets, when everything is cooperating and all of the correlations and all of your indicators, everything's behaving normally, well, anybody can perform well in that environment. As they say, everybody's a genius in a bull market. But as soon as the market throws you a curveball and does something unexpected, that's when not understanding what the metrics truly meant could actually be financial costly. So long story short, basically that's what the VIX index is. Most important thing to understand is that it is non-directional. It is just a forward expectation of market movement based on options activity. And like I said, it's plus or minus. So keep that in mind. Now I want to get into what the numbers actually mean. So I'm going to pull up Thinkorswim here, check out the VIX index right now. And you can see right now it's trading at 1950. Just for simplicity today, I'm going to go ahead and say it's trading at 20. So great, the VIX is 20. But 20 what? What does that 20 number actually mean? So in the case of the VIX, the 20 is actually a percentage. Some people think it's a price, maybe it's $20. It's actually 20%. And I've got a little slide here that should clear that up. So remember, the VIX value is the market's expectation for one year S&P 500 movement. So for example, like I said, I'm gonna use 20 today. A VIX of 20 means the market expects the S&P 500 to move plus or minus 20% over the next one year. If we wanna know what the forward one month expectation is, we can actually take the value of the VIX index, which in this case is 20, and we can divide by the square root of 12, representing 12 months in the year and that square root is 3.46. So the VIX of 20 divided by 3.46, that means the market expects the S&P 500 to move plus or minus 5.78% over the next one month. We can also go down to one week and use the square root of 52, which is 7.21, and in that case, the market expects S&P to move plus or minus 2.77%. You can do this over any time frame. So what typically people do is one day. Now it is important to remember that the VIX calculation is a calendar calculation. It's not actually trading days. But when I go down to one day, I do typically use trading days, which on average there's 252 of them. So the square root of 252 is 15.87. A VIX of 20 implies that the forward expected movement of the S&P 500 is plus or minus 1.26% per day per trading day. Now I've got a quick chart here that I can leave here and you can always reference back to this video. You can pause it on the screen. It'll basically tell you a quick breakdown of some general VIX index prices and you can scroll over and see one year, one month, what is it implying over one week and one day, etc. So just remember that this is here and you can always reference back to it. 
So just to give an example of how to use this and tie it back to the fact that I originally stated that I felt and many other people felt that the VIX index was a little bit low considering the magnitude of the crash we saw in the S&P 500. The average VIX value in December was 24.95, essentially 25. So we can look at that column here. Now a 25 VIX is implying a one month move of about 7.22%. And remember that is plus or minus. But the S&P 500 was actually down over 9% in December. And if we look at the average true range of the S&P, which is a good metric, I suggest people start using it, because it does take into account intraday movements and the highs and the lows for the day. But the average true range was extremely high, again showing that the VIX index was a little bit muted given the magnitude of the crash. So hopefully now you understand what the VIX index actually is and what those values mean. So like I said, you can reference this chart if you like, or you can get used to actually using those square root calculations. They're pretty simple. Just memorize the basic ones, square root of 12, square root of 252, and you can go ahead and do those calculations yourself. So the next time you're at a dinner party and somebody chimes in and says, you know, the VIX index is actually overpriced or underpriced, you can now chime in and say, actually, based on my own square root calculations, I think the VIX index is actually fairly priced where it is right now. I don't know, do they talk about the VIX index at dinner parties these days? I don't get out much, obviously. So go ahead and click the link right here, sign up for the VTS newsletter, and when you do, you're gonna get full access to all of my trading strategies for a full month absolutely free. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and leave those in the comment section below. See you next time.